Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Virginia and I have brand new fall crafts to share with you today. These are great for the transition from summer into fall, especially this first one because we're actually going to use a pool noodle to create these pumpkins. So it is perfect to take an item from the summer and repurpose it into some fall decor. Also thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I'll get into some more of those Cricut crafts a little later in the video. So starting off, I took a pool noodle from the Dollar Tree and I cut it into a couple of different lengths, some a little bit taller and some a little bit shorter. This fabric is from the Dollar Tree and for the first pumpkin it's super easy. Just cut off some of the fabric, lay the pool noodle in the center, and then you're just going to start pushing all of the fabric into the center of the pool noodle and bam, you have a little pumpkin. I also made one a little bit shorter and did the exact same technique, cutting the fabric and putting everything down in the center of the pool noodle. If you don't have a pool noodle, you can use a paper towel roll, a toilet roll. I've actually done this with toilet paper. I did it for a pumpkin and I also did it for an apple. Later on when I add in the stick from outside, I just added in a leaf for our apple. So the other two, I am going in with this fuzzy chenille. I call it the powdered sugar donut because that little pumpkin really made me hungry and looked like a little mini powdered sugar donut. But this is super easy. It does take a long time. I thought it took a long time. I put my yarn around the end of a pencil and tied it off and that kind of acted as my needle going through the thread. And you're just gonna go over and over and over again through the pool noodle. This is a good one to do with kids because no hot glue is required and it can keep them busy for a while because it did take me a good 20 minutes to get all the way around this pool noodle, but I love the way that they came out and the finishing touch was adding a stick from outside into the center of our pool noodle. This next DIY, I am repurposing something that I did a couple of years ago. I took some burlap and some wood pieces from Dollar Tree to create a sign. Back then I used a Bible verse that I really like. So I wanted to show you first the process of how I made this sign. So I did pick up four pieces of wood from the Dollar Tree, but you could pick them up at any of your, you know, scrap wood stores, or if you even have any laying around in your garage. This was the quote that I went with here, but you will see the new fall themed one that I picked out from Design Space. Then I went ahead and took the Waverly Antique Stain and just stained my four pieces of wood and the two that I thought came out the prettiest, I went ahead and hot glued onto the front of our sign, but I did make a mistake. I forgot that burlap has all these little holes in it. So when I placed down the hot glue, it did go through the burlap onto my craft table. So for the next one, I remedied that by taking some parchment paper and placing that underneath so that the hot glue didn't run out out onto my table. Then to really create a nice balanced weight to this sign, we're also going to be attaching the wood pieces to the back, adhering that with some hot glue, and that will just make sure that the sign isn't more weighted in the front and you know hanging at a weird angle. This way it'll be evenly distributed. Then to turn it into a hanging sign, I grabbed some wire jute from the floral section of the Dollar Tree and just made a little loop and I'll be placing that between the two wood boards. At so I did that again, but one of my favorite autumn quotes is autumn shows us how beautiful it is to let things go. I don't know, it just reminds me of fall growing up and how excited I'd be for back to school and for the cooler weather. So I did use my heat transfer vinyl for this and then my little heat press to make sure that it was on the burlap. I did have to do it the highest setting because it is a little bit more difficult to get the heat transfer vinyl to stick to the burlap. And originally I had some ribbons on the side but I wanted a little bit of a pop of color so I went with these different colored mums and hot glued those to the edges of our sign, the yellow, orange, and the red. When it comes to fall, some of my favorite ways to decorate are using fairy lights, especially clear jars. It just reminds me of a jack-o'-lantern. So I went with this mason jar that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. They do have one that's a little bit more of an amber glass color and a little bit more pumpkin shaped. I found it so often last year, but of course couldn't find it this year. So I did have to improvise a little bit. This one's not quite as pumpkin shaped, but I thought it would still do. So I took a whole mixture 
mixture of some fake lamb's ear and hot glued that to the top and then took the top of one of these Dollar Tree pumpkins and hot glued that down into the center so that it looks like the top of our pumpkin. I next went in with a little bit of raffia and just made a bow which I'm going to also add to the top of our pumpkin. Autumn brings up so many family memories for me. We used to always do a bunch of different crafts for fall and Halloween. I'll put up a couple of pictures here of me crafting when I was little. I even spoke with my mom on the phone yesterday and we were reminiscing on all of the different fall crafts that we did when I was younger. So it's really fun to be able to create crafts now and look back on all of those great memories. To make some of the vines coming out of our pumpkin, I took the ends of some green ribbon where they still had the wire, wrapped it around a pen, and so it you know, had that nice coil to it, pulled the coil out a little bit, and then hot glued it. Next, I went in with some Spanish moss, pretty much just covering up the lid, but also being careful to make sure I did not glue the lid shut. If you guys have been watching a while, you know I have a love-hate relationship with Spanish moss. I love the way that it looks, but it is so messy. It gets absolutely everywhere, so it's kind of a nightmare to use. If anyone has any suggestions on less messy versions of Spanish moss, please let me know down below because I just can't think of any. For the front of the jar, I wanted it to be pretty plain because we are going to be putting those fairy lights in and that's really the focal point, but I still wanted to add a little something. So I had these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. So I just placed these in the corners of our jar. It just added a little bit of a pop of color so it wasn't, you know, just a completely plain jar. You just place these on, rub them a little bit. You can use a popsicle stick. I usually just use my fingernail and then peel them right off. These are my favorite fairy lights to use because they are battery operated and they go for eight hours and then turn off for eight hours. So it's really nice if you're going to use it like me. I grab some duct tape and duct tape them to the bottom of the lid. So that way every day they'll just come on at the exact same time for eight hours. So I don't have to take the lid off, you know, turn them on and then turn them back off. So they're really easy to use. It is my first fall married, so I wanted to make a special sign that had me and my husband's names on it, and also our dog, Mister. He is definitely a big part of our lives, so I did use some Cricut vinyl and my cutting machine to create this memorable craft. I'm going to start off by taking this thankful and blessed pumpkin sign from the Dollar Tree I'm using the color Pumpkin by Waverly and Vivid Orange by Art Deco. A bit of a painting hack from me is how to get really pretty shading that looks like it's seamless in with your decor. You don't want super harsh lines, you want it to be nice and blended. And how I do this is I don't wait until the paint is fully dry, I wait till it's about 75% of the way dry. So there's still a little bit of wetness to the paint and I just find when I go over that with a darker color and start shading, it just blends in a lot better and looks more natural and not so obvious. So here I am taking the color Pumpkin by Waverly and I had added a little bit of brown from, I believe it was my Folk Art Brown Umber. And I just added that in to make the definition lines in the pumpkin. And then I went in with a little bit of white paint and added some highlights. At the bottom of my pumpkin, I had ran out of the pumpkin ornaments that the Dollar Tree has, but they did have these that were covered in a paper with a buffalo check. And I decided to paint over that. I'm going in with a mixture of the Waverly pumpkin color and a bit darker of the brown. And I thought that it blended a little bit too much into the large pumpkin sign. So I really dirtied it up to make it look like it was a pumpkin from a pumpkin patch using some brown paint, adding in the definition lines and going all the way around the pumpkin and also painting the stem brown. These were really cute pumpkin. They didn't say they were ornaments, it just said pumpkin decor at the Dollar Tree. I did like the buffalo check, so if you go for more of the black and white theme, I think that would be cute. So for this other one, I did the exact same thing, painting it orange and adding the brown paint all around the edges and on the stem. And for the center pumpkin, which is going to be my dog's pumpkin, I painted that in this blue, slightly green color. It's called Agave by Waverly, and I really have liked using it for my fall decor. I've never done anything outside of traditional oranges, yellows, and browns for fall, 
but I'm really liking the blue color. One of my favorite fall traditions is crafting. So this fall I am using my Cricut to create a little bit more of those personal crafts. Like I said, I'm gonna put art names on these pumpkins. It's just a super easy way to turn a fall craft into something a little bit more special. Let me know in the comments down below, what are some of your favorite fall memories or your fall traditions? What does crafting and creating in the fall bring to mind for you guys? Mine definitely reminds me of sitting around that dining room table with my mom and brother, either carving pumpkins or making ghosts. Usually my dad was the one carving them because we weren't allowed to have the knives, but fall just brings up so many great memories for me. Now I am burnishing the vinyl onto some of this Cricut transfer tape. I love the Cricut transfer tape. I've tried a lot of them and it is by far the best. And then I am just placing that down onto my pumpkin, burnishing it again onto the pumpkin with my tool. And when I peel it away, it is left on the pumpkin. And of course, I had to add a little paw print for our pup. And of course, if you don't have a Cricut, you could just use a marker pen to write this all out. But I was looking at some of my past projects. I first got a Cricut for Christmas. My family bought me one last year. And just looking back on all of my previous projects, of course I liked them, but if I would have just had my Cricut in vinyl, it would have saved me so much time and so much effort. And there's just something about the crisp vinyl lettering that looks so professional and really, I think, elevates any DIY. I picked up these adhesive dots from the Dollar Tree and I really like to use them on projects recently, especially on ones like this that I'm constantly adjusting and moving things around. It's so much less permanent than hot glue so you don't have to get everything perfect on the first try. You have the ability to move and shift things without that commitment of hot glue. I also made a bow out of some burlap ribbon. In Cricut Design Space, I just searched for an image using Pumpkin Patch and this really cute font came up and I really liked it so I just inserted it into my project before cutting it out. I also added the Welcome to R above the fancy Pumpkin Patch using the Four Seasons font and then I just burnished that down into the center of the pumpkin and it looks way better than anything that I could have tried using a paint pen and my handwriting. To hold up the sign, I had already cut off the jute hanger, so I just made a new one. And I still felt like there was a little something missing, so using raffia, I made two small bows and placed those on the outer smaller pumpkins. Next up is a super easy sign. I always see signs like this in Kirkland's. That's one of my favorite stores to go to for inspiration, but I don't wanna spend 40, 50 bucks on a sign, so I'm gonna repurpose something that I already have. I actually got this in 2015. I looked at the date on the back of this and was shocked that this is almost 10 years old. I had it in my very first apartment and I really like it, but it's almost 10 years old. It is time for a little bit of a change. I'm a little sick of looking at it. So I decided to spray paint it white just so I could start off with a fresh canvas. So I took some of this painter's tape just to protect the wood border because I did still really like that. And then went in with my white Rust-Oleum spray paint. This list of different fall activities I saw on Cricut Design Space and so many of these were exactly things that I look forward to in the fall. So I did place this down on here. Let me know in the comments down below if any of the following that's on this fall list you or your family does. I would love to know what you guys do to celebrate the upcoming fall season. I think my favorite one on here has got to be apple picking and a hayride. It is just not a complete fall season without a fun hayride at the pumpkin patch. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.